Okay, uh, hello. Uh, welcome to our presentation about uh, static analysis and how to use data from static analyzers uh, efficiently. Uh, in the last three years, uh, uh, we tried to um, implement the static analysis and static analysis results uh, into the Red Hat processes. And this talk is going to cover some lessons learned. And um, basically, recently we open sourced uh, some of the tools we are using um, so they can be even used by, uh, by community and this will be later covered by Kamil. Uh, let's go to the agenda. First, uh, we will take a look uh, on just the basic meaning of static analysis. What do we mean by static analysis uh, in this uh, concept? Uh, in second part, I will cover the, cover the lessons learned, uh, how to use the data from static analyzers efficiently to not lose the time. And the third part uh, will be covered by Camille and uh, he will introduce the tools we are using, the processes we are using and that kind of thing. So first, what is the static analysis from our perspective? Um, the generic definition is analyzing source code uh, without executing it. So you don't need to have the binary, you have just the source code and you are analyzing that. Um, most of you uh, know the output of uh, compilers, the warnings and that, that stuff. And this is the output of static analyzers. Some of them are better in that, some are not that good. Uh, still, we are interested in using static analysis to find the bugs because there are many static analysis uh, ways. So, this, this was just a quick introduction and we can go to, to the lesson lands, <laughs> lessons learned. Uh, I will try that, uh, to do that in 10 minutes to have more time um, uh, for, for the tool. So, it will be challenging, let's try that. <laughs> Well, the first slide, uh, the first lesson learned uh, is that you should use uh, more static analyzers, not just one, not just compiler warnings from GCC, not just client, not just coverity, not just CPP check. Um, this is very important because, um, uh, for example, I remember a utility case uh, when where the upstream fixed uh, the data from uh, from coverity with about 80 patches, and he just checked uh, the stuff uh, with the CPP check later on and found another 30 patches uh, based on the CPP check. Uh, the output of these tools sometimes doesn't overlap much. Uh, they uh, re uh, they uh, report completely different bugs in some cases. They have different focus uh, in uh, what part they are good at and uh, use as many as you can. Use the continuous integration because if you uh, do the uh, static analysis with uh, four tools after the release, you will end up with, I don't know, 100 defects probably and you will need another release. Uh, if you include the static analyzers into the re uh, development process, it is the best way because you can fix the bug uh, immediately after it is introduced, you know about uh, the code uh, you wrote before a few days, so you are able to fix it uh, more quickly. Um, be sure that analysis takes some time and uh, it is comparable uh, with the compilation time. Um, and um, it is not a good idea to use it in production build system because uh, using some of the static analyzers uh, need to modify the build route and uh, you need some workarounds to get it running with uh, the compiler, uh, which understands to uh, to the static analyzer. So, yeah, don't use it in production. Use it separately. Uh, to have some idea about Fedora stats, uh, we are doing the uh, B yearly, six months, six monthly um, uh, scanning of uh, rel set of packages in Fedora. It is about uh, 1,500 C and C++ packages. And you can see the number. Um, it is 150 million lines of code. And based on the um, re um, usual number of defects, uh, one, one kilobyte, uh, one kilolines uh, per defect, uh, it is about 150 
uh, kilobytes of poten uh, kilos of uh, potential defects. And one third of uh, them, based on our stats, is actually something real and you should fix that. Uh, and as I said, um, it takes some time. This is the main reason why, why uh, we don't do that for all the packages, just the for rel ones, because even the rel ones uh, take about three weeks of time and uh, therefore uh, the six month cycle. The last uh, line on the slide, um, you can join scancoverity.com. You know, Coverity is commercial analyzer, uh, but uh, they offer um, scanning of open source projects for free. So you can just uh, sign, up, sign up for scanning and based on the uh, project side, you will get analyzed uh, by them uh, in their infrastructure and you will get uh, the results and you are able to use that as upstream. Second part, um, you can su uh, suppress uh, the warnings with annotations. Th this is sometimes not uh, something well known and not well used. Um, it is sometimes tricky because uh, annotations uh, are usually um, valid only for one static analyzer uh, and there is no common uh, style of annotations which limits that. But the second approach uh, uh, to not analyze all the stuff uh, again and again is to use different scanning. And we provide a tool uh, for, it, for that and Kamil will talk about that later. Why is different scanning so important? Imagine the case that you have 30 defects in your code and only 10 of them uh, are real and 20 false positive. You do the fixes, you fix all the real bugs and after one year, you do the second scan, or after six months, and you have five new defects. Uh, after six months, usually you don't under, uh, you you don't remember all the bugs, all the stuff you analyzed. So we have to walk through all the defects again if you don't do uh, the different scanning. With five new defects, it means you have to analyze 25 defects only with two real and 23 false positive, which is not very efficient. So use the CSD tool and you will see only five new defects, two real and three false positives, which is just quick check and you can do that in a few minutes. The next item, review the results carefully and think about the defect twice, three times. Try to think why the uh, analyzer is complaining about this. This is actually the tool we are using for the review internally and engineer analyzed the defect and said, okay, this is just normal go to uh, jump. And Kamel saw that and said, no, this is, this is real defect. And uh, they discussed that via IRC and it was real defect and it had to be fixed. So really think about the output of the analyzers. Sometimes it is not clear and think twice before saying it's not a bug. This is, simple to say not a bug, but sometimes they know why to say it is non-reachable code. The next uh, item, um, you should focus on high priority defect types. Um, this is easy to say, what is the high priority defect type? Uh, well, we uh, decided to have the common real bugs defects as uh, the high priorities because you will get most bugs based uh, based on that and with uh, the data from um, the internal tools um, we found out that uh, the use after free error uh, was the most um, accurate. accurate one because uh, it had 71 percent uh, of real defects which which is really great and resource leaks as well more than 60% uh, of resource leaks were real resource, resource leaks. Sometimes only corner cases, but uh, still were to fix if possible. And missing initialization is marked there as well. Only 40% were marked as, uh, as uh, real bugs, but the highest uh, needs fix now ratio, uh, the highest number of these bugs needed a respin of the package uh, in the in the release process of Red Hat Enterprise Linux. 
in the table you can see more detailed uh, things. Uh, you may be surprised that there are no uh, buffer overflows and no uh, null de references. These defects are of course important and you should fix them, but this is only uh, the top of uh, the topmost uh, defect occurrences table. Uh, just uh, the six, I think, six uh, most uh, frequent defect types. Other than that, uh, they had less than 5%. Uh, the next item is uh, pretty funny, focus on real world defects. And um, it would be very nice to know what of the uh, reports are real defects and what are just corner cases ne which never happen. And it might be even possible in future to uh, have this connected because we have quite a lot of data on uh, retrace server of ABRP and it is gathering basically the crash data and tracebacks. And uh, there is uh, a tool to match the crashes to static analysis this uh, result. It is very premature, pre-alpha state, but if you want to make it happen uh, to reduce the number of defects you have to walk through, it is really good idea to check this uh, project on GitHub and help um, with, uh, with this to get it more useful. Well, your turn. So this part of the presentation is going to be more uh, technical. I will tell you how we run uh, static analyzers on RPM packages. And I will advertise uh, some tools uh, we developed for you to simplify using of static analyzers. Uh, so as Ondra uh, uh, said already, uh, static uh, analysis is done by uh, compilers. Uh, so in our case, uh, the compiler is uh, GCC. So the first step uh, to deploy a static uh, analysis or use its uh, use their uh, results is to take GCC warnings uh, seriously. Uh, once we get this right, it is uh, quite easy to plug uh, other analyzers into the build process and use their results uh, also. Uh, and we, we will get uh, to an uh, approach uh, how to uh, fully automatically analyze a given uh, source RPM package. And finally, we will build the differential static uh, analysis on top of that to get just the list of uh, newly introduced uh, defects in, in an update of, of, of a package. So here you can see which uh, problems uh, you may encounter while processing uh, GCC warnings. The first problem is that uh, some projects uh, produce a lot of warnings. So you are not able to process them all. And even if you are able, you don't want to do it because you can break uh, something by fixing all the warnings. Uh, on the other hand, uh, some projects uh, do not uh, produce any warnings. So there is uh, some possibility to force them uh, to produce more warnings so that you can work with some re results. Uh, another problem is that uh, compilers uh, do not use absolute pass in diagnostic messages. Uh, basically, whatever uh, file name you give uh, to the compiler, uh, it, the compiler uses it in diagnostic messages. So if you have a big enough project, the relative uh, paths uh, are not uh, are ambiguous. Uh, then you can you may encounter problems with some obscure uh, build system of projects like Samba and uh, Cornshell, etc. And then it it is uh, it is difficult to even uh, catch uh, the warnings produced during build or uh, tweak uh, the flags and and so on. And finally. Uh, if you build uh, packages in parallel, what, what is that uh, uh, all the modern Fedora packages uh, support, then it is difficult to uh, collect uh, the uh, GCC warnings uh, consistently. Because if uh, a warning is uh, split into multiple lines 
and you run uh, many uh, compilers in parallel, the, their output uh, may interleave with each other and the output is no longer useful. Here you can see uh, solutions uh, to all the problems from the previous slide. So first we want uh, to make sure that we are not introducing new warning while we don't want to touch the code that already works. So we use a reliable tool to compare the list of defects and focus on the just uh, introduced defects. Or contrary, we can, if we fix a warning, we can use the tool to verify that the warning really disappeared. Uh, for the projects that produce uh, few or no warning, we want to adjust the warning level. And again, we can do it only for the newly added code so that uh, if, if the package does not produce any warnings during build, we can increase the level and just check that our patch does not, uh, did not introduce a new warning at the higher level. So this way we can, uh, we can uh, force uh, higher level coding standard for newly added code uh, only. Uh, as I said, uh, the relative paths are not uh, unique, so we need a tool to translate uh, relative to absolute path in diagnostic messages. And the easiest way to achieve uh, this is to put a compiler of wrapper in the path envir environment uh, variable. So the wrapper can run the compiler and translate all the file names in diagnostic messages to their uh, absolute uh, path. And once we have uh, such, a rep, such a compiler wrapper, it is uh, easy to extend it to synchronize uh, the writes to the capture file so that if we build in parallel, we still get uh, consistent uh, output. So this was about uh, GCC warnings. Now we want to uh, extend the approach uh, to for some more advanced uh, static analyzer. So we can use the same idea as for the GCC warnings. We just put another compiler wrapper to pass, which, uh, which is of course not the only approach uh, to do it, but uh, it, it is better than other approaches because first we do not, uh, do not uh, scan code that is not going to run. And we also use the exactly same uh, configuration as we use uh, for the build. By configuration, I mean uh, especially uh, header files and macro definitions. And I, I will go through the uh, static analyzers we currently support in our approach and tell how we achieve, uh, achieve this result with this uh, static analyzer. So the analyzers are uh, coverity analysis, uh, CPP check, and CLANG. Uh, coverity analysis is a, an enterprise static analyzer. It's closed source, a closed source and not for free, but it is available to maintainers of open source projects as Ondra, Ondra already uh, said. Uh, during the build, coverity only captures intermediate uh, code to a so-called uh, intermediate directory. And the static analysis uh, itself uh, may even run on a different uh, machine. It runs uh, separately on the captured data. And Coverity provides its own compiler wrapper, so it is already ready for this approach and we can easily use it. The next static analyzer is uh, CPP check, which is a static analyzer based on pattern matching, which is a very lightweight static analysis. It is fast, but it provides uh, useful results if we run it uh, correctly. CPP check uh, supports, uh, can, can be run uh, blindly on just a directory with sources and it provides you some results. But this way the analysis is not uh, so precise because it tries uh, several combinations of uh, macro definitions and it ignores uh, missing include files and so on. And this usually implies many false positive and false negative. So we would like to run a CPP check in a more precise mode. So we again want to use uh, some compiler wrapper. 
However, upstream does not provide any compiler wrapper, so we implemented uh, our own. First, it was uh, written as a shell script. Now it is uh, rewritten rev in uh, C, and it is much faster because it runs uh, CPP check in parallel uh, to the com compilation, and this uh, gives us a significant performance boost when running, for example, autoconf checks and uh, stuff like that. When, when we run, uh, we when we analyze. Um, many uh, C units uh, that are not so big. And this compiler wrapper is open source and it is uh, going to Fedora soon. Uh, the next static analyzers uh, we considered is CLang. CLang comes with a set of uh, static analysis based uh, checkers running on top of LLVM, which is a low level virtual machine. Uh, CLang is a CPP check written in C++, but uh, the developers tend to use uh, more recent uh, C++ standards, and the new versions of uh, CLang are difficult to compile with older compilers. So consequently, we use not so uh, recent versions uh, to analyze uh, packages in older uh, builders, in more enterprise uh, builders. Uh, CLang comes uh, with its own compiler wrapper. The wrapper is written in Perl, so it's maintained by upstream. It, it is well tested and it works well, but it is uh, too slow if we chain the compiler wrapper with the other compiler wrappers we use. And currently uh, it is uh, a bottleneck uh, while we run autoconf checks. So at some point we might uh, want to optimize this compiler wrapper as well. So we are back to uh, plugging uh, static analyzers uh, into build process. As uh, Ondra said, we do not run them when we build packages uh, for uh, production because it could uh, influence uh, the resulting uh, packages and we it also comes with some limitation, but uh, we also use Mox, which is uh, a change root based tool for building RPM packages, which is used for the production builds, but we use it uh, in a slightly different way. So the build environment uh, we use for scanning the packages is very close to what we use for building RPM packages in production. But on the other hand, we are able to make some destructive hacks in the change route uh, in order uh, to make the static analyzers uh, succeed. For example, if uh, the static analyzer is not ready for the uh, system header of C++ for the latest C++ standard, we can simplify the system header so that uh, the analyzer parses it. We, of course, cannot do something like that in, in uh, production builds because the output would be unusable, but it usually uh, it is usually harmless when we use the change root just for the static analysis. So we, here you can see an uh, overview of uh, the helper tools we developed uh, for running uh, static analysis. The first one is uh, CS Wrap, which is uh, a generic compiler wrapper that uh, translates the relative pass to absolute pass. It allows you to add or remove compi compiler flags fully transparently. And it also allows you to synchronize the writes to the capture file so that you get usable output even if you build in parallel. Uh, the CS uh, prefix in, in the names uh, of the tools means uh, code scan, uh, which is uh, which is common for all of them. So CS CPPC is a code scan uh, compiler wrapper for uh, CPP check. I, I already mentioned it runs uh, CPP check in background. You can download it uh, from the Git repository for now. It is going to, all, all of these tools are going to Fedora. And uh, the next uh, tool is uh, CS Mox, which is the high level interface uh, for user. It, uh, you give it, the user gives it just uh, a source RPM, mock profile, and list of analyzers to use. 
and the tool just returns the list of defects. And finally, there is uh, the CSDiff uh, project that provides uh, command, li command line utilities for comparing, filtering, and formatting the list of defects. So the name is just for the CSDiff, which allows you to filter the newly introduced or fixed defects. But there is, you can, for example, use uh, CS grep from the same package to filter defects just from uh, one subdirectory from the kernel tree or so something like that. Uh, here is uh, an example uh, how it uh, works uh, all together. You can see a process tree after running uh, CS mock uh, for your package. You can see that the user really specified only the package mock profile and list of analyzers to use. It internally uses mock to set up the change root, which runs the RPM build inside as, as usually. And you can see that make uh, builds the package in parallel, so we see many instances of, of the GCC process here. However, if we put a GCC wrapper in pass, we get uh, something like this. This wrapper is for uh, C length. It is called CCC analyzer. And as I said, it does not uh, run uh, the analysis in parallel to the compilation. So the one instance can run either GCC or C length analyzer, but not both at the same tam time. But again, the GCC here is another, is a symlink to another compiler wrapper, which is CPPC in this case. And it runs a CPP check in parallel to the GCC. And finally, all these tools are wrapped by the CS wrap wrapper, which captures their output and is responsible for locking the capture file. So in the end, it looks like this. So to conclude uh, the talk, uh, we, uh, we showed that uh, using a single static analyzer is insufficient. We provide a user-friendly way to run multiple static analyzers. Currently, we support Caverity, CPP check, CLANG, and GCC warning. Uh, we maintain a set of uh, easy-to-use command line utilities for processing the results of static analyzers. The project is called CodeScan Diff. And we are now getting all the helper tools uh, into Fedora. So now we can probably go to questions. The statistics. I it, it was in the slides. Actually, the 150,000 uh, of defects was really found. Yes. Yeah. Uh, One, um, 150. No, no. Um, it, it is uh, it is available to all engineers on uh, our pages, and we sent uh, the internal reports of that. And the engineers uh, should work with uh, with upstreams on fixing them. So. There, there was the discussion is to show them publicly, uh, but um, uh, for example, in uh, in um, uh, it was not an MP project. They decided to do that on wiki page, so everyone could participate on that, and it uh, ended up uh, only with two guys working on that. I guess year or two to fix all the stuff from the net SNMP. So uh, having. Um, everything out uh, for a year or two. Uh, basically, the data are shown, and as we do the difference, uh, people can just take a look on the difference if they don't have time uh, to, to analyze uh, the whole stuff. And uh, the difference between the Fedoras is usually not that big. It is usually up to 10 def defects in many packages, and you can easily check that. In Hour or so. The, the question was uh, how many defects we find uh, during the regular Rawhide uh, scan, the regular scan of Rawhide Fedora. Uh, 
extend in what direction you mean to add another checkers? Right. Yes, it is possible. But you. Sure, those are open source projects, so we just send a patch to developers right. and right. they can incorporate your checkers. But uh, you, of course, ha have to respect the. But you have to respect uh, the approach taken by the tool. So if uh, CPP check is on, uh, supports only pattern matching, it <coughs> may be difficult to implement some more advanced uh, static analysis. Right. So you have to go for the right tool, and then if it is open source, you can easily extend it. More questions? This, this user interface uh, is uh, integrated with uh, Red Hat processes and this is not something we, we, pl we plan to uh, open source uh, at the moment because it is very <coughs> tied to, to the coverity analyzer and uh, as uh, the coverity is non-free, uh, you cannot uh, make the benefit from, from that, that much, but uh, we have plans to make the UI somewhat uh, less dependent on the on the coverity and open source it once it's done. Uh, for, for these tools, command line tools, uh, which you can integrate into your uh, development process, um, it took us about uh, three years to get them uh, into the shape from the coverity only to um, supporting the most of the generic uh, uh, static analyzer. Um, with, with the UI, um, it might be the same time. Okay, so, so it's specifically for this uh, UI text file? Yeah, it's, it's the text file and you can grab it with, with the CS grab tool so you can filter out some of the defects. Uh, we produce even the HTML format so it is more easy to read with some links to uh, CWE uh, notations so you can check what the defect actually means, what are the most common fixes for this defect and that kind of stuff. Okay, so the idea is to partially remove the defect in the user Yeah, and there, there is JSON format, so you can even uh, process that automatically if you want. What do you mean with checkers? Which uh, at the moment, uh, uh, CPP check and extended GCC warning. It was maybe not clear from the from the uh, presentation, but uh, we have more levels of GCC warnings. So we don't use just the common ones. You can enhance the level of GCC warning. So in normal build, uh, you will get spams, but uh, in analysis, you can get the useful results. It some. You know, some, some warnings uh, uh, takes more time to, uh, to run in GCC and they are very, very useful. But because of the time and uh, reali reliability, they are not enabled by default and they some of them are not even in the V extra, W extra. And we use them. We can, uh, we can just uh, make the level of the warnings higher and get the warnings from GCC from more advanced uh, checkers of in GCC. So uh, we use the standard set of GCC warnings. It is a bit uh, higher than uh, the default one, but uh, not the highest level. We use the CPP check and we use coverity. So and um, we have uh, still not uh, that high percentage of, uh, of uh, successfully analyzed packages with uh, clients and LLVM. It is, uh, I don't know, 60% or something? I think it's much more, but they yeah. are safe to ignore if we do just the differential static analysis. Yeah. Because uh, if there is some problematic code, it is very likely that it is problematic, problematic in old and new version of your package. So it, it is eliminated. You, you just get what you introduced by your patch. 
So but definitely project. Clank is uh, planned to be added once uh, we have the wrapper maturing up and all the workarounds. Because as we can modify the build route, uh, the header simplifications are al already mentioned by Kamil, but uh, we may add uh, more workarounds within the uh, change route of mock. And we have some more, I guess. Or we can just wait till they implement the newest standard of C++. makes sense to add it there as well if it is generic enough because uh, you know there is a lot of static analysis tools which are focused only on one thing and it is not easy to automate them all these uh, uh, analyzers are easy to automate so if it is easy to automate uh, the build with uh, that tool you can easily add that okay great is it uh, an open source tool? So the infrastructure is pluggable, so it is easy to add there another uh, other static analyzer. If you just need to have the compiler wrapper, if they do not provide any, you need to write uh, your own. And then you just uh, process, uh, the pr processing of the result is common for all of them. So you don't have to, you can reuse the code and you don't have to write it again and again. For example, uh, Kernel developers use sparse, which is integrated into the build infrastructure of kernel, but the analyzer is not generic enough, so if you run it on some set of Fedora packages, it do does not uh, scale. It has some parsing problems and so on. So we are mainly focused on static analyzers that are ready for a wide uh, scale of uh, projects, which these are, uh, which these three certainly are. Uh, sorry, what is the command? Uh, sparse parsing is uh, the same as GCC Actually, you, you mean it is in the same format as GCC <coughs> So it is not useful anymore because it's already integrated in GCC, if I understand. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one more, th one more th thing to add. Uh, why to use these uh, tools? Uh, as I said, the difference analysis is very uh, important. Uh, you don't uh, want to go through the all defects again and again. And many of the open source analyzers don't support the difference uh, making of. Or two analyzers, uh, analyzers. So the CS div is able to compare the results, and you can use it. Uh, and actually, the CS div was uh, open sourced. I don't know two years ago, yes. because it was uh, useful even be, be, be without uh, these uh, uh, mock wrappers. It understands uh, many formats, so you can use it for, for example, just for the GCC warnings. You don't need all, all the other tools. You can. Uh, get GCC warnings from your project uh, in the way you get them uh, usually and <laughs> run the CSD on them and you get the newly introduced or fixed warning using this utility. Okay, we are out of we time. See out of